helping people living under repressive regimes communicate with each other and with the outside world. There are many countries in which access to the Internet is monitored or it is restricted by a firewall or proxy. The recent attempts by Iran to block access to websites they consider subversive or are critical of the government is a good example. Anonymous systems such as Tor are useful to a degree, but because the directory of Tor knows is easily available, it is possible that it could be blocked by a repressive regime. However, since Freenet does not publish a directory of all the addresses of all nodes, it's unlikely that a repressive government would be able to block all or even most of them. Freenet Classic OpenNet, or FCON, is freeware open source peer-to-peer -peer software that allows you to publish and obtain information online in a way that makes any attempt at censorship effectively impossible. It provides the ultimate in freedom of speech based on the concept that anonymity is essential if you're going to have true freedom of speech. The network accomplishes this by being completely decentralized and does not rely on any one central server. Those who publish or download information are protected by anonymity. By being decentralized and using multiple layers of strong encryption, the network is much less vulnerable to attack or censorship. All communications between FCON nodes are encrypted and then routed through several other nodes any one of which may keep a local copy of all or part of the information being routed through it, making it difficult in the extreme for anyone to determine who is inserting or requesting information from the network and what free sites or files are being transferred. This also makes it impossible to determine if a request is originating with a specific node or if that node is simply the latest in the chain of nodes and is simply passing along a request that originated from a node that could be up to 20 hops away. All FCON users contribute resources to the network in the form of bandwidth and hard drive space for their node's encrypted data store for storing files. FCON is unlike other peer-to-peer -peer networks in that it doesn't allow the user to control what files are stored in their data store. It is also extremely difficult for a node operator to determine what content is in their data store. Files in the data store are kept or deleted based on their popularity. When a node's data store is full, the least popular files are deleted to make room for newer, more popular content. This also means that as long as a file is either requested or reinserted, or both, once in a while, that it will remain in the network. On the other hand, since most people running FCON allocate anywhere from 5 to 100 or more gigabytes of space, files dropping out of the network is actually a fairly rare occurrence these days. There are free sites and files still available in the network years after the person who inserted them stopped inserting new additions and left the network entirely. To illustrate this, think about a scenario that happens all too often on the regular internet, sometimes referred to as the slash dot effect. Somebody publishes a website, book, video, a program that's really popular, and people begin downloading it by the thousands. The bandwidth demands become so high that the server that's hosting it slows to a crawl because it's only got so much bandwidth available, making everything on that server very slow to respond. It's even been known to become so bad that the servers have crashed under the load. Now take the same situation in FCON. The new file is inserted onto the network, and people begin downloading it in droves. FCON handles this by making copies of the document on nodes closer to the node that it was requested from. This has the effect of moving data closer to those who want it and making it more easily available. The effect is that the popular Freenet content actually thrives on conditions that would crash a regular Internet server. A node operator has very good plausible deniability concerning the content of their data stores, because all files in the data store are encrypted to make prosecution by persons wishing to censor content within FCON much more difficult and unlikely. FCON can be used in a number of ways in addition to sharing files like other P2P apps. It's more of a network within the Internet. Things you can use it for include publishing websites, which are known as free sites, and blogs, referred to as flogs, 
communicating via message boards with tools like Frost and uploading and downloading any kind or size of file. Because FCON places a maximum priority on anonymity and security, it'll probably never be as fast as the regular internet. This means it's definitely not an out-and-out -out replacement for other file sharing programs such as BitTorrent. However, where those programs are vulnerable to attack, FCON is almost completely bulletproof if you're willing to trade off a little bit of speed for security and anonymity. For example, the RIAA, MPAA, and similar organizations around the world are making life very difficult for sites like the PirateBay.org and their users as they try to shut those sites down and persecute, or, well, prosecute the users. Those organizations would be wasting their time to attempt attacking FCON if only because simply requesting a file to see if it's there will, in fact, help ensure that it remains available in the network and FCON's design makes it all but impossible to determine who is inserting or requesting any given content. FCON is a continuation of the original Freenet 0.5 project that the original developers abandoned in favor of Freenet 0.7.5. Some might ask, why not use Freenet 0.7.5 since it's the most recent official build? There are a lot of opinions why 0.5 is considered better, and to list them all here would take far too much time. I believe that basically it boils down to a couple of factors. The 0.7.5 Darknet version is based on the concept of each node connecting to nodes that they can trust. The problem is that in actual practice it's very difficult to find enough nodes that you know the operators well enough to trust them. Because of this, any node will only be connected to a small set of neighbor nodes. AFCON operates with the, with the assumption that you have no reason to trust nodes that yours connects to. It is also capable of connecting to far more nodes at the same time and those connections will also change automatically over time as the other nodes either occasionally go offline for a while or simply don't have the information that yours is requesting and also as your node learns about other nodes through auto discovery. You can learn more about FCON and download it from these two sites the SourceForge site fcon.sourceforge.ne and an alternative unofficial freenet download site peculiarplace.com slash freenet. There will be future videos covering the installation and use of FCON and several applications, namely Frost, the FreeSite Insertion Wizard, Freenet Utility for Queued Inserts and Downloads, and the use of Thingamablog to create Freenet blogs.